the, uh, if the rook moves, the knight can be captured. If the king moves, there's either a fork or a fork. So like king g8, for example, and then rook takes c8. And then e7. Check. So black resign. Okay. But it all started because of this pawn structure. And that this, this, this hole on d6 um, was an issue. And this pawn and this pawn were, were big problems. Okay. So that's illustrating the importance of pawn structure. Okay, let's talk about something different. No, an accuracy for white, I said. Was that knight c? Was a knight e5 move? Or knight c5 or whatever. It allowed black to win a pawn back. Okay. So now, next, next principle to illustrate. This is going to be a slightly different in you. So what's going on here? I forgot to give black a king, but I believe this is it. I don't think anyone's down material or up material in this position, so... Okay. So... So what's going on here? Black wins, no white king. Oh, I forgot to give white a king. Good call. So what's going on here? So one of the problems that rears its head in endgames is the fact that there's limited material on the board. So yeah, I mean, this pawn is weak, but we really have no way to win it. And yes, this is a past pawn, but again, there's really no way to push it. So uh, I have to do some more clever ideas. OK. So. So what's going on here? The e-pawn has no defender. I concur. That's more of a tactical thing, though. It's more of a tactical thing. Imbalance. Well, it's not really imbalance. Good versus bad bishop. Okay, well, who has the good bishop and who has the bad bishop? So, Alex, who, who has the good bishop, who has the bad bishop? You think both bishops are fine? Well, I mean, he's right. He's right. But which one's the good bishop? Okay, so black's is good. And white's pawns are fixed on white, right? So is white's bad? Yeah, so white's is bad. Right. Good. Good, uh, good observation. So what does that mean? Can white try to trade down to one king and pawn ending, starting with bishop d7? Okay, well, first of all, is the king and pawn ending one? I don't think that it is. I don't think that it is. I mean, it, it really depends, but... Like, I mean, I'm assuming that this king will get closer. 
and I don't believe that ending is one. The problem is, whenever white plays king a4, you play king b6. And then assuming that all the pawns are fixed, I, I can always, I can always, I can always go king b6 whenever you play king a4. So you, you can never actually make progress. But you kind of have the right idea. So what, what should white be trying to do here? Trade his bishop for blacks and get an idea. Yeah, so you guys are actually both right. Yeah. So ideally, you want to have this knight on d5 because then it would help support this pawn's advance as well as attack this weak pawn. The problem is you don't want to have this bishop exchange for this knight. So you guys, you guys have have hit the nail on the head. So ideally, you want to exchange bishops because again, like we said, uh, white's bishop is technically bad. It's outside the pawn chain, but it's technically bad. And black's bishop is good. So our first order of business is to get the bishop to d5. So the question is, can we play bishop d7, or is that just lose a pawn? So there's some tactics that go into uh, being able to play end games. So can we play bishop d7? So our idea would be wanting to play this. But does it just lose a pawn, or...? Black can't take the pawn? Why not? <laughs> Why not? Chaps the queen? I don't see that it's chapped. Bishop d7, queen e4, bishop c6, queen d4. It's not trapped. Okay, and then what happens when he exchanges it off? Okay. So yeah, you guys are right. So queen takes, pawn takes, and now d6 wins. Can't stop this pawn. So pawn takes knight, pawn takes, and now can't stop b7 and b8. Yeah. And if d3, then this doesn't help because this knight controls the queen square. So b7, d2, queen, and this knight controls the queen square. So yeah, you guys are right. So bishop d7 does work. So queen takes pawn is not possible. It's kind of funny though, the queen is trapped. It only has one square it can go to. Can't go here, can't go here, can't go here, can't go here, or here, or here, or anywhere this way, or anywhere this way, or this way, except for this one square. So it is actually pretty much trapped. Kind of cute. Kind of cute. But uh, but yeah, so if queen d4, then again, this is just win. So. The one thing you don't want to fall for, though, is d6, pawn takes knight, d7, because then e2, and now actually black's winning. So you kind of want to be careful about that one, but uh, if you just take on e3, you can't stop b7 and b8. So. Okay. So bishop d7, queen b8, bishop c6, queen d8, bishop d5, knight c7. Bishop takes, Check. bishop takes. Okay, so we did it. We win. Okay, well, I haven't done anything yet. So what now? So what now? <laughs> we managed to exchange our bishops, which is what we wanted to do. But what now? Okay, well, h5 doesn't actually get f5 for a knight, because he is absolutely under no obligation to take it. Uh, b6 is probably indeed too soon. Knight d5, are, are you sure? You want to go into a queen ending? I don't think going into a queen ending is what you want to do. Black has salvation in the queen ending. 
bring our king into the fight. Uh, I don't know where exactly it's going. But yeah, Minty and Eggnog both got the right answer. So Queen A4. So ideally, if Black could manage to get his knight to B6, it would be great. But Queen A4 kind of stops both of his ideas to get his knight to B6. So if Queen A4, if he tries Queen A8, for example, uh, after take, take, knight D5, this is over, because this knight is trapped, and B6, B7 just wins. And similarly, if knight A8, uh, we play the move queen A7 first. Important. Check. Because now we control these squares with our queen, and we gain a vital tempo. And then king G8, and now again knight D5. And again, this knight is completely trapped, and again, we're just playing B6, B7, and B8. So queen a4 was the move of the day. Very good. Okay, so we're, we're, fi we're fighting for controls of, of, of these squares. So queen a4 gets the queen active on the a-file, and black cannot trade because the knight gets trapped on a8, thanks to knight d5. So this, knight, this knight's always ready to hop into d5. Very important. Okay, so he's going to try to blockade on b8, so queen b8. Okay, so now we slowly inch forward queen a5, control b6. Knight e6. Okay, now we're getting ready to start pushing. E6. So now he's going to try to establish a blockade on, on b7. So knight d8. Queen a7. Check. Obviously, taking is a no-go. Take and queen. So he has to block. Queen b7. Now our knight gets in. Knight d5. King e6. Okay. So white's definitely made some progress. Uh, this capture is never on the cards. Uh, if the queen ever moves, he's going to get mated with queen e7. So this queen is kind of stuck. And by that token, uh, this knight is stuck. Because if the knight ever moves, the queen hangs. So black's kind of stuck. But, I mean, he can just move his king back and forth. So the question is... I mean, he can't move his king this way, obviously. Because the knight takes f6. But after king e6, he can kind of just shuffle his king back and forth. So the question is, how does white make progress? But no, notice how none of Black's pieces can move. Again, this queen can't move because queen e7 is mate. The knight can't move because the knight's protecting the queen. Uh, but Black does have king moves available. So how do we how do we continue in this position? Bring our king into the fight? Okay, where is our king going? <coughs> Be careful. Don't want to get your king mated. I mean, you want to make it go this way? Might be trouble. Might be trouble. Want to make it go this way? It's, I mean, these pawns kind of stop it. Okay, king of two, king of three. Okay, I pass. Then, then what? F4, again, I pass. I mean, well, where, how are you making progress eventually? Attack his knight with our knight? Okay, that seems hard to do. That seems hard to do. Pass and go where? I'm, I'm playing king f6, king e7. Or, sorry, king f7, king e6. I'm, I'm just playing king f7, king e6 forever. A king g5 doesn't seem possible. I agree it's hard for blacks to find passing moves, but I do have a couple at my disposal. Okay, so this is a very important, actually, this is a very important uh, principle. This is actually probably the most important principle of all endgames. This is, a, this is actually a really nice illustration of it. So um, the, the real idea is black has one weakness, that being that he has to kind of tense this pawn. Um, but oftentimes in endgames, one weakness isn't enough. So this is what's known as the principle of two weaknesses. So we need to open up a second second front for the king, or, or for white, or, or, or against black. So where's the second front? So sometimes it's more obvious than others. Here, d5, 
the answer is we want to open up this side. So G4. And now all of a sudden, F5, EF5, GF5, G5. Now all of a sudden, we got we got.